Okay, I'm, I'm here with Gunnar, a new friend from Bonn, Germany. I'm in Western United States. Uh, we've hooked up to uh, discuss how to facilitate this advanced young Tai Chi program. So th thanks, Gunnar, for joining. We were discussing your history and your Tai Chi Chuan history. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Mike, for inviting me. And it's really a pleasure uh, to talk with you directly uh, on this way. Um, yes, like I mentioned, I, I just um, started my practice uh, in 1995. I was a young student at that time. And uh, well, just by chance, it was really by chance, um, I ended the organization of uh, Chu Ping Hung, the third disciple of Grandmaster Yang. And uh, I'm still in it and I'm still practicing. And um, uh, I think it was in 2005 that I decided also to, be, to become a teacher because, uh, well, that's uh, the best way, <clears throat> the easiest way how to get more input from the master. Of course, he, he gives this uh, standard lectures, workshops and so on. But if you want to get uh, more, more input, then uh, it's better to become a teacher. And um, also for the self-learning by teaching other people, uh, I think it's you, you, you can learn quite a lot. So uh, I decided that, but I just have a very small Tachi school, nothing special. Um, I, I have a, just a standard job as a full full-time job, and um, I'm just doing it. Um, yeah, besides the job, so it's really nothing special. I'm no. Uh, full-time expert or professional, just try to make the best out of it. And, and what was your, um, what was the basis of your attraction to uh, this advanced young Tai Chi corrections training? Also, from time to time, I, I use YouTube uh, to search for some content and just by chance also um, maybe due to the algorithm of YouTube, uh, I found uh, the first episode of your channel. And, um, well, when I read the name of Grandmaster Young, of course, I was interested. And because you rarely see it, uh, even on YouTube. Um, so most of the Tai Chi content is about other people, other persons. And so I was a little curious. And you know, I just uh, saw your first episode. And uh, somehow, um, well, from the very beginning, I had some kind of feeling that I understood very well um, what your intention might be. Um, well, and there was some kind of, can I say, emotional connection, or I don't know how to, to call it. And uh, so I was attracted. And after that, I uh, tried to keep up with the other episodes, step by step. I could see the interest in Yang Shoujong because your teacher is the Chu King Hong is the third and last disciple. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware that he was um, formally um, inducted as a disciple close to 1985 before Yang Shoujong's passing. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yes. Okay. Can you fill us in a little bit on that? Yeah, I also don't know it exactly, but I think, but he was the last one and I think it was, um, a couple of years before uh, Master Young died. Oh, just like in 83 or something like that? Maybe, yes. I think oh. Master, Master Young died in 85, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, in 83, 82, some, some, somewhere around uh, that time. But I don't, don't, know, don't know exactly how long he uh, trained with Grandmaster Young before as a, as a usual student. I don't know. That history is not publicly known within his organization? I think the uh, older students, uh, which are even older than, than uh, me, uh, I think they know it. Um, they have a very long relationship with him. This is not a real topic. You know, uh, we just, if, if he's there, um, because you don't have the opportunity to meet him uh, all the time, so they are very rare uh, situations. And so the focus is always on the content, on the... on the. Right. Um, right. W would you be able to dig that up um, just with some searching if, if you were interested? 
just like um, uh, maybe maybe tracing tracing from his 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 earliest students to it would be pretty easy. Just when did you start? Yes, you know? so what we can surely say is that he started his teachings uh, in the late seventies in in, uh, in the United Kingdom in London. Okay. 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 And uh, there he opened a school. It seems to be that he got the permission of Grandmaster Young to do that. So. Um, you mean uh, in the late in the early eighties? No, in in the in the, uh, in the late maybe in the, in the middle or the late seventies. So okay. it was before before he was uh, made a, a disciple. Got uh, it. And um, so well, he spent that time um, created a school, moved to Europe, and created uh, set up the school. And um, as far as I know, this was uh, done with the permission of Grandmaster Young, and then later. He was uh, made a disciple. Got it. That corresponds to my experience because I started at the Jinsun Club like in 1975 um, or something. And I, hey. I, was, I was a teenager. Yeah. And, I, <laughs> and I remember him coming in for corrections from Jinsun. And, hey. he was, and he was introduced as a student of Yang Shoujong. And yeah. in Chinese, I think I mentioned, they, they call this Ke Shi, which means that um, a, a senior disciple could be asked to pitch in for the main teacher to teach yes. another one. And yeah. that, I think Jin Sun actually helped a lot of um, Yang Shoujong's students uh, that way. But I remember, I was just this little young guy, but uh, he was older. And we were asked to help him, okay, help, help train him up. Yeah, so that that timing wise, um, the seventies makes sense. Yes, uh, in terms of my experience. By by the way, by by the way, Mike, do you know if they uh, are somehow related? Because uh, I think in, I, I don't know um, how often the family name Chu is is in China. Oh. Uh, because also the, the Chinese character is the same, I guess. Uh, but is there no relation between them? It's just pure coincidence? My intuition tells me there was just a coincidence. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, does he speak Mandarin or Cantonese? I think, uh, well, basically uh, he uh, speaks um, Cantonese, but okay. he can speak both. Okay, yeah. yeah. Jinsun was mainly a Cantonese toy san which is a, a lot of people in Hong Kong. Uh, so he, uh, Chu, Master Chu was, King Hong was also in Hong Kong then, right? Yes. Okay. And th th therefore the connection with Yang Chou Jung then. Mm, okay. Yes. That's, that's very, very interesting. I've done many takes already on episode nine mm -hmm. and um, where, whereby episode eight was the most painful in terms of having to dredge up memories that I hadn't processed yet, and then to share it. Episode nine is the most challenging in terms of content, because I feel the need to, as the title states, which is the scientific Tai Chi aging research that I did, which will be pretty straightforward, but I want to tie it in with something Grandmaster Yang told me one of those gems that uh, I, I really paid attention to because he said the origins of Tai Chi Chuan begin with Jiang Song Feng. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that name's tossed around a lot of places, a lot of analysis on that, uh, a lot of opinions as to, was it a political, you know, I mean, even at that level, but mm -hmm. The fact that the fourth generation patriarch said that, it, it's very different. You, because these people, you cannot take anything they say lightly. Mm -hmm. the, the system and the, the lineage and the tradition is so tight, mm -hmm. it's so tightly woven together that everything they say, not just do, but everything they believe, and I was lucky to have access to him at that time has to be taken seriously. So, and that leads to the, the last phrase of the title, which is 
are the Yangs living a myth? Mm. Because Jiang Tongfeng was a Taoist priest, mm -hmm. uh, reputedly in the Wudang temple. And, you know, the whole story of watching the battle between a snake and a crane and yes, yes, the yes. Of the Well, when it comes out of the mouth of Yang Chuzhong, you can be sure that, that the three generations before him, starting with Yang Muchan, also made that part of the, it's called Kou Shou, which is the oral transmission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that it's so important that we address this as part of the first 10 episodes, the introduction, mm -hmm. because what it, implies is that Taiji Tren, besides being a martial art, had a spiritual component to it. Wudang Mountain, right, a, a religious sect. Yes. Jiang Chongfeng, a Taoist priest. But you don't see that in the practice of the Yang family. Yes. They're, they're ordinary people. Yet, I'm hoping that I, I conveyed, I've conveyed effectively enough in the previous episodes, this extraordinary quality that Yang Cho Jung possessed of, of integration of body, soul, mind, spirit. That mm -hmm. I, frankly, you know, I, I've met hundreds of teachers, spiritual as well. I mean, sorcerers who who could shoot fireballs at me when I'm sleeping at night. I mean, that level of like black magic and so forth. But there was something very special about Yang Shoujong in that he was ordinary, yet within his ordinariness, he embodied this these abilities. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he had to split off and become and do a black magic or a witch. Yes. It's just, it was, and that was what I feel that you would find the most fascinating because I know um, I'm pretty close to the Germans now, given my wife's German. Um, and uh, I know that there's a lot of spiritual seeking, not only among Germans, but among Europeans mm, as yes. a whole. Mm. And, and my feeling is that a lot of Europeans go to practices like Taiji trend. Yes. Mainly for that. Secondarily, you know, very, very few just people who want to fight. Is, is that true? Yeah. The people who, who want to learn fight, you can say that's maybe 0.1%. Um, uh, regarding, regarding the people I met. Or the students I uh, I met, and uh, so most people um, are searching um, to do something for their health, yeah, to keep uh, to keep healthy, to do um, something about against stress, yeah, to reduce stress, and maybe also some people, well, like like you mentioned, just for some kind of spiritual um, development. What what percentage would that be? Uh, separating uh, that from separating that from stress and health. Uh, it's it's not so stress and health. It's it's, it's a major, majority. Um, okay. So maybe I don't know ten percent. It's not it's not that much. You know, in Germany, uh, Tai Chi is uh, not so popular. Of course, more, nowadays I think most pop most people know it. Um, but for example, compared to yoga, yoga is by far much more popular. And, and yoga is is known for its spiritual dimension. Um, or, or, yes. or I might be in America. It is, you know. Yeah, the, the, yeah it is. It is. But, but here, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. But but here also maybe most people are doing it just for like like kind of wellness uh, practice. Okay. okay. Um, so maybe uh, well, also for yoga, uh, health, and so on, stress reduction. Um, that are the the main reasons to do it. Oh, here's here's the proposition then. If the spiritual dimension, which uh, you're saying is in terms of population interest is 10%, but if the spiritual dimension can be isolated, 
and shown to be able to systematically, you know, lawfully influence the relaxation, stress management, health, mm -hmm. and wouldn't that open up the human potential curtain? Yes, yes, yes for sure. Yes. So, so the question is then uh, how yeah. to raise interest or, or, or bring to awareness that in Taiji Tren or Qigong or these areas that you and I dabble in contains this not well-known aspect, mm. uh, maybe known intuitively, but not well-defined. So you can't grab it. You can't access it. Yeah. And in regards to Taiji practice, you got to question whether what we're getting from it, if, if stress and relaxation and physical health is all that it offers, we're all going to die anyway. So whether, you know, I mean, is there, wouldn't it be natural for people to be looking now beyond, you know, to co contemplating what lies beyond the physical? I mean, like we're talking about the Fantan Li, the, the repelling power. What, what good is that? <laughs> if yeah. you, at, at some point you're going to lose it. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. That's right. <laughs> so, so th that's my whole point is that there's a, there's a key Fantan Li repelling power is a, stepping stone to this other dimension. Okay. But, th but this other dimension is not being recognized. So it needs to be made clear up front that connection. Yes. And th therefore, Zhang Tongfeng, are the young living a myth? I, I frankly don't know whether Mary Young is teaching only how to become powerful in pushing hands mm -hmm. or whether there's something beyond like a spiritual yes. transcendent yes. aspect. Uh, I, maybe, you know, maybe you've heard things. I, no, I don't know. No, I don't know. Okay. Well, my, my feeling is about Tai Chi practice that uh, even though maybe sometimes, for example, a student starts just um, because of um, uh, stress reduction or something like that, that over time, after a couple of years, um, you change the Tai Chi practice, the, the continuous Tai Chi practice somehow leads you step by step um, uh, to reach also the other levels. So maybe in the first, in the first stage, it, it begins on the, on the body level, on the physical, on the, just on the physical level. And then step by step, maybe uh, you get no to this more energetical level. Uh, your sensitivity will increase quite much over the time. And then maybe step by step also your, let's say, motivation changes in between. So it might be completely different also when I started. Um, but I had some kind of spiritual motivation right from the beginning. But um, of course, the main part was maybe uh, I'm very interested in this internal martial art. But uh, nowadays, um, for me, this is not that important anymore. So um, can I say the motivation changes over time. That's also very interesting. So maybe Tai Chi is a very natural way of development um, just by, by doing it over the time on a regular base yeah. uh, to reach also uh, those higher, higher levels. Of course, you need this kind of knowledge and input, but just by practicing that, then naturally uh, you grow up. So this is somehow my, my feeling. That sounds, uh, it makes complete sense. And it also corroborates my own experience uh, with yours. But the question then becomes, when a person naturally becomes begins unfolding as a result of years of training, is there ever a limit, like a ceiling yes. that is met because the mainstream or even the teachers, their curriculums 
cannot provide yes. enough clarity or direction beyond that. I'm going to call it a body based mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, perception. Yes. Yes. Is that possible? That 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 that's the case. Um, yeah, I think we can say so. Yes. Yes. So have you reached that level? That that that. Uh, that well, I, I think I, I think I also wrote you in, in one email that uh, my personal feeling is, of course, it's always difficult to judge about uh, oneself. <laughs> um, it's much easier always from the outside. Um, so my actual feeling now is that uh, maybe there's now some kind of uh, readiness maybe for this uh, higher sphere. Um, and well, I think within, so within, within yourself or within the world community? Uh, in myself. Okay. But maybe also, of course, in the, in the community. Um, for example. It, it really is such a market change that you can't deny it as chance. Like there, there really is a hike in interest coming yes. your way. Yeah. Due to the fact that you might be approaching that ceiling yourself and needing more information. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, I, my, my personal feeling is that, of course, I got uh, quite much input regarding uh, all the inner uh, internal principles and so on. And I worked for it a, really, a very long time now. And of course, I will, I will continue this. But somehow I have the feeling that uh, in, in, in this area, there is some kind of, uh, can I say, uh, lack or it's, it's some kind of gap. So maybe that was the reason why, why I found your channel. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's just perfect then you know, for both of us. So Zhang Song Feng, how does that strike you uh, when you hear that Yang Shou Zhong himself cites Zhang Song Feng as the originator? I mean, I'm sure if, if I picked his brain more, he'd talk about the Chen family. But... He's going. He's going way back beyond before. Okay. Well, it's it's a little bit for me. It sounds a little bit astonishing because so far, you know, if 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 you read all the books and so on, the uh, historical books, then somehow my impression was okay. Uh, in how far we can really um, rely on that Chinese history? Because you know, uh, Chinese like to to make the history a little bit uh, fancy and so on. But if uh, Grandmaster Yang also said this, this is really, um, well, really interesting. Any insight or any questions that brings up or, or uh, impressions? Um, or just, just astonishing. I, I, I actually, to tell the truth, uh, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have expected it. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, it, it just, it floored me. I, yeah. after, after a while, I mean, after I had time to really sync with it, it's like, wait a minute, you know, these, these people are very practical. Yeah. And yeah. so, so, and therefore what I wrote, are the Yangs living a myth? Because, uh, and this, this gets to um, the Taoist work that I was exposed to that I'd like to share with you next. I know enough from other traditions, not just Chinese, like Native American and so forth, mm -hmm. that in order to reach uh, certain heights of consciousness, of self-development, spirituality, you may call it, you can't have your reality so locked into the here and now, the material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, even even um, religious people, all religious people who are avid in their belief in God, they're in a sense psychologically speaking, they're living a myth. Mm. The, the whole idea of when I die, I'll, I'll go to the gates of heaven and mm. all that process. There's a mythology that needs to be accepted in order for that reality to ground in a person's life. So living a myth is something we don't talk about usually when it comes to mainstream religion, 
but it's basically a, a natural part of the human psyche, the mm-hmm. psychological architecture. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jung, Jung, for example, you know, yes. he wasn't just out there on his own. Or I don't know, if, not sure if you know Rudolf Steiner. Yes, uh, no, yes. I, I, I've studied anthroposophy decades, very deeply. He was not yes. just he was not just Waldorf. He was yes. a he was in the mystery schools as well, mm-hmm. part of the Theosophical Society of Europe. Uh, and so, without that dream dreaming type of projection in your practice, you're just left with very mechanical. And, and as we see, it's all about chi and blood, chi and blood. Mm, mm, and mm. so I think the people who will be joining us in this training will also join us in this quest for mm. to identify and to embody in our own practices, this other side. And so Episode nine is very important because it brings up almost like the requirement that if if you just want to focus on pushing hands and developing this rooting power, that first of all, you're not going to go very far. Yes. (laughs) But in order, in order for that, that, that force to come out to, for you to be able to have that force, requires way more than just physical instructions. Mm. It warrants, therefore, this focus today or this focus in episode nine on emphasizing that this advanced young Taiji training absolutely includes the requirement to be able to imagine beyond just the physical body to be, to imagine beyond chi and blood mm. to mm. imagine beyond jing chi uh, sperm essence chi and shen spirit yes because, because it's not a comp- they're not complete nomenclatures they're mm. not uh, concepts like jing chi and Shen, the, th- the three treasures which it basically is the code in acupuncture and Chinese medicine schools. Yes. Yes. But there's a fourth level because they're related to the organs. They're related to the organs, kidney, liver, lung, heart. Mm-hmm. And so Jing Qi Shen would essentially be kidney, liver, lung. Although we sort of assume that it's, covers all the bases. But the, in terms of transformation, have, have you heard of Jing transforms to Qi? Qi transforms yes. to Shen? Yes, I have heard about it. Uh, yes. what, is, what, is your, what is your version? Because mm-hmm. you're, doing, you're doing this when you do Tai Chi and Qigong, right? You're doing this alchemy, right? I'm sorry? You're actually practicing this alchemy when yeah, ex- you, yes, you go yes. Tai Chi. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, so what, what, what is your version that you learned and teach? Um, well, basically, when teaching, I usually I don't go into that detail so much because, but well, it depends a little bit on the class. Some some classes are maybe a little bit interested, but uh, well, the standard uh, students are not that interested. That they just want to practice, you know, okay. just <laughs> once a week, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, yeah. And um, well, from for for me so far, yeah, I just I just follow kind of say um, the tra- the traditional explanation like uh, Jing converts into a Qi and so on. And what uh, what, did, what are the other steps? Qi and then uh, Qi converts uh, converts into Shen, and Shen into emptiness, a Wu or a, or a Kung. Uh, I don't know the Chinese. Uh, shu Shu means emptiness. Emptiness, or, yeah, or, or not. Yeah, empty. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, so, so this is maybe the more, I can say, uh, the final stage. This is emptiness. And so uh, this is just an example of what I believe to be the Chinese diaspora. And it's all already become doctrine. But when you don't have the whole picture, it, do- it doesn't jibe, it doesn't work with the, mm. 
you don't, you never feel completely satisfied because a part of you knows something's missing, you know? Yes. And yes. so th there's a fourth phase, which is not a secret, but it's just not accounted for. And that's shi he dao, which means that emptiness he means to uh, merge with the Tao. Mm -hmm. What's curious is why that is not included. It's very similar in the West when we see everywhere body, soul, spirit, body, mind, spirit, body, emotion, spirit. But they're in groups of threes when the complete entity is four. Mm -hmm. And so this is just an example of what we're going to bring in it's going gonna, it's gonna to require that we demystify or that we uh, challenge some assumptions that are very popular and mainstream at this core level. Mm -hmm. Because when you add, Gunnar, Shu He Dao, then you've got four levels. Okay. And even though it's abstract and, and, and the, the Chinese teachers say, well, you don't have to worry about that. It's so hard to get anyway. Just focus on, <laughs> just focus on getting to emptiness. Yes. No, that's not how the modern mind works. Mm. Our intellect with information technology is already capable of, of seeing things as complete systems. And because complete systems are lost and, and we're, we've been left in this patriarchal era with um, almost complete, but not fully complete. This, in my opinion, is the reason for uh, these practices or these systems not being successful in changing people, in changing the world. Mm -hmm. We've lost the big picture. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. It's just a, an intellectual level. Yes, yes. So it's very important that we bring in these the the whole picture but in a way that makes sense to you because i, I if we just leave this conversation the way it is it's not going to go anywhere it'll be just as ineffectual as if we never discussed it yeah. and so, so my my whole dedication in this program is to make it so real mm -hmm. and so complete for you that you can't deny it. Yeah, I see. And, and, and therefore, when it comes to this myth, again, you can hear it, but what I want to do is deliver that experience to you so that you go, oh, that's a myth. Now I know what that is. Mm -hmm. And so this idea, starting with the fact that Grandmaster Young possess these extraordinary qualities, uh, powers, if you want to call it that. And there's more he told me, but I, I just cannot disclose it until later. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally get your point. It's, I think, um, yeah, I totally agree. Yes. Okay. So I'm not claiming Yang Shoujong had any association with Taoist meditation. But Taoist meditation is, was such a endemic, a, a deeply woven into the fabric aspect of Chinese culture back in those days. Like mm -hmm. everybody heard about it because it was a classical culture. And so there's no way that Yang Luchan could have gained, and he was, a, he was not a large person. He was very thin and so forth, yes. Mary Young had said. Yet he could take a big staff and break down a wall. You know? <laughs> and, and so, and that was just physical, but other extraordinary qualities had to, in his, when he was doing the form, he, he wasn't just what I call what I call connecting and breathing. In fact, <clears throat> what, what I'm going to recommend is to really hone in on connecting and breathing, because that's really what 
is so good about Tai Chi, right? Would you agree? Yes, yes. You're connecting, you're breathing. It's, it's what I learned from Jin Sun. Yeah, yes. It's what made me fall in love mm. with it. Just the feeling, the, the endorphins, mm. the, the, yes. the, the bliss. It comes from just like connecting and breathing and you just mm -hmm. feel so amazing. There's nothing like it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But then that's just the basic phase. Once you get that, then you begin to do something different with, with it. Mm. That is not so straightforward or immediate. It's more, let me just say, you've got to use sort of like the Chinese mind, you know, the inscrutable, uh, the, the complexity, the multidimensional You've got to start to bring that in. Otherwise, if all Taiji Chuan is, is connecting and breathing, uh, it's good. That's why it's so popular. Mm -hmm. But for those who were using connecting and breathing are still having trouble dealing with the world because the world now is digital. Yes, yes. We're in a digital challenge now. And connecting and breathing is too slow. It's like third gear in a fourth and yeah. in a sixth gear BMW. But you know, it's like you're in third gear, which is great when you're going 45, 50 miles an hour. Hmm. But to handle now the stresses and the complexities and, and the 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 manipulation by hmm. media. You need to be more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And connecting and breathing, as basic as it is and essential, that's why you have attrition. That's why people don't do it. And the reason they do yoga is because all of yoga, it's just part of the, its design, has that spiritual transcendent quality where, which allows you to leave. Mm, okay, yes. And not... Feel the burden, at least during your practice. Yes, yes. And I, I don't think Tai Chi Chuan offers that directly. Yeah. As yes. much. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yet, yet, if we add this final dimension that Yang Shou Zhong embodied, then we get it. Ah, okay. I see. Yeah. So... During 1984, I was enmeshed in uh, with the Young family. I was in graduate school, and I mm -hmm. was working very hard. It took me seven years to get my PhD, mm -hmm. because in order to get a PhD at, in my field, you had to make an original discovery. Okay. You couldn't, it wasn't just writing a thesis. You had to make a discovery in the field, and then it had to be verified. And working very hard in my lab, doing experiment after experiment, mm -hmm. and couldn't find the door. Very frustrating. I mean, we, we, there were jokes in our school that there were graduate students after 12 years in their yeah. office. You open the door and there's a skeleton yeah, leaning, yeah, leaning against the computer. <laughs> it was that hard to graduate. Okay. So, so, so I was in the middle of that tension. Then I get a call because they heard about my Taiji achievements from another university to head up a scientific research project. It was actually the uh, USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging at Tufts University, which is also a renowned school in um, Boston. I was at Boston, Boston University mm -hmm. and they asked me, if I'd be interested in heading up a study. So as exhausted and maxed out as I was, I, I had learned uh, from my other teachers that Confucius said, at 18, you set your mind on learning. At 30, you stand up. At 40, mm -hmm. you have no perplexities and so forth. So how that was uh, conveyed to me was, before you're 30, you just go for it. 
you become like a sponge. You take everything you can yes. because it's a very valuable time. And don't worry about exhaustion. Mm -hmm. So I did get exhausted. I, I actually, my body broke down a few times from exhaustion, but I took on this two-year project. I was essentially running around doing two whole dissertation researches from 80, like 84 to 86 or 83 to 85, something like that. Okay. All during that time that I was trying to create a relationship with Hong Kong. Yes. Yes. And um, so I had full access, full, fully funded by the government to uh, do exercise physiology tests like uh, lean body mass, bone mineral density content, a VO2 max where you, you run on a treadmill uh, mm -hmm. with, the, with the mask on until you uh, get exhausted and you go in aerobic to really, really dig deep into the, the benefits of Tai Chi practice on aging. Mm -hmm. I had to become an expert in the field. I had to know all the literature throughout the world. I, I became an expert mm -hmm. of all the published data up to that time. And the results showed that uh, you might find this interesting. I had to do my own psychological inventories. They, they were exercise, they were medical. So I did that and I found that yes, indeed, there was stress release uh, management skills that were developed from Tai Chi. Uh, overall, very good for health, very different from Western exercise, different from running, different from biking, different from skiing or rowing, definitely positive results from it. However, I had to separate the subjects into two groups because there was the recreational Tai Chi practitioner who did it once a day. They actually weren't in better shape mm -hmm. than someone who ran. They were not. They didn't have better cardiopulmonary capacity because they didn't, they didn't do aerobic exercise yet. The, the athlete didn't necessarily have stress management skills. You see, so the both, but then there was the other group and this was fewer people, but they were the ones who practiced Tai Chi for martial arts. I see. Who, yes. Who trained very heavily. Mm. And so they were, they became the performance group. And they, they actually were very good in their physical fitness, but okay. it, it, it the, the test required that I separate out two separate groups and that I identify Taiji trend as good in this respect, good in that respect and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was a great experience. I got to know the Western medical idea of health and that uh, Taiji Chuan is now much more accepted in the medical Western medicine at, than it was back in the 80s. Yes, yes. All very good, positive sign. Mm. But I, I met two people as a result. Uh, one became my subject. He was, he was uh, Li Yashen's disciple in Chengdu. That's Chen Wusheng. I had mentioned him. He gave me introduction to uh, Sichuan. And so a few years later in 88, when I got my PhD, I spent a lot of time in Asia and went to Chengdu mm -hmm. and met, met them and, and made that connection. But I also met this other guy. He called, uh, he, he saw the ad in the paper. He says, I'm not interested in being your subject, but I'd like to take you to lunch. So, so uh, we were in Chinatown. He took me to lunch and he said, my name is Mr. Chen. And I thought you might be interested in some information. Mm -hmm. And I, I, how could I pass that up? And so <laughs> he said he belonged to this sect, this Taoist sect in Taiwan called Kunlun Shen. Kunlun mm -hmm. means Himalayan mountain, mm -hmm. the Himalayas. Shen means immortals. Mm -hmm. And apparently um, the, the teacher, Liu Pei Zhong, who was a Shandong, uh, Northern, Northeast Chinese, he was trained in the temple became very well known in Taiwan and set up his, his Taoist teaching there. And so Mr. Chen was part of that. Okay. He said, uh, I want to share these techniques with you. Uh, usually they're only for people who initiate, but I thought you might find it interesting. So he taught me these 
brought these diagrams of the human body. Uh, uh, they were not acupuncture channels, but uh, and this is this is where our conversation begins about Taoism. Is that okay with you? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, so so it had these maps and had these points on the maps okay. and li- and lines drawn from one point to the other, mm-hmm. and every technique had a different patterning and use different points and different patterns. But the core task that he suggested I try was to, it's called show chow, which means to, in stillness, in meditation, to quiet myself to where I can focus in on these points okay. that, were, that were so microscopic that you started Gunnar with the size, imagining the size as the tip of a pin, that small. Yes. yes. But then from there, to continue to shrink it, we met twice. He gave me all the stuff and I, I worked it myself like I always did. And I, I had these experiences where I went, I felt I went into other worlds. Okay. And uh, just to preface that, at 17, when I first, 16, 17, when I first started Tai Chi, I was able to self-induce like a nirvana, like ecstasy by bringing my breath down and just breath control. And, you know, then it opened up. And so I've had that experience since I was young. Maybe I was open to it. And so I did it again in a different way with this technique. But I really feel that, um, before I go on, that these techniques, the culture of it, is very similar to what I observed with my other eye. Mm-hmm. Okay. Watching Yang Shoujong because he wasn't just doing this. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. just doing connect and breathing. <laughs> yes. Yes. But that, that's that's the beginning of it. Yes. And, and I think regards the 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 big paying disciples. Mm. How do you how do you convey it? To them, if that's not something that's part of their aptitude or yes. interest, interest, you have to sort of be spiritual. Yes. yes, yes. You see, that's right. Yeah, I see. Mm. So I'm interested in bringing it in, maybe with the help of you and others, into the curriculum, mm-hmm. okay. but in a way that that you would agree with and mm. that would work yeah. for you. Hmm. So um, that was in the 80s, uh, 84 or five or so. And then 88, I was in Taiwan on my annual trip to visit my Gong Bao Jai, my Bagua teacher, who I ended up having a 23 year relationship with. And that was a formal master disciple relationship. In other words, he, 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 he was very Chinese about it. And that hmm. is, um, cause I met him when I was 21 and I didn't, I was a student. I didn't know anything. You know, Oh, you don't pay me anything. You don't pay me. <laughs> but then, but then you sort of get wind that if this is good to continue on and you're to become a lynch holder, you know, I, I was so grateful for all that he did that yes. when I did become make, begin to make money as a professional, I would come, I would, I would bring thousands of dollars of cash because I was single. Yeah. I was making, I was in medicine, you know, yes. I'd bring thousand dollars catch. And we had this little game where you have to put in the red envelope. And when I'd go to his house, uh, which was um, this very modest 1927 <laughs> construction, um, I'd slip it under his pillow. The first thing I did. And then he'd, he'd, and then after a while he'd say, Hey, where'd this money come from? Who put this on it? it, it, is, it <laughs> It's in U.S. dollars. You know, I just arrived. But we played a game. I go, oh, no, I didn't do it. So I ended up giving him all this money. But it wasn't in the same spirit. Yes. It was literally because I was so grateful to him. I see. And, and I stayed to the end of his life. And we thought he was 88. Then they found his uh, birth certificate. It turned out he was 96 when he wow. died. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he um, – so uh, – that that I'd like to that is 
the transformational tools that I mentioned that you said you were interested in the others? Yes, yes, yes. I've completely converted that to the main offering of advanced human training. Mm -hmm. And we'll discuss that in episode 10. Okay. okay? So okay. That, that's why I had so much trouble um, doing nine to, by myself because, and I really appreciate you helping me here yeah. because it was just so much I, I want to download and yet I don't want to just be boring, you know, yeah, irrelevant. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. So in 88, I'm about to go to China to visit uh, Sichuan after Taiwan and my friend calls up. I had met him in 84. He worked for Taiwan Power Company and uh, I, I got a job teaching English there and uh, up in the up in the mountain and it was thunderstorming and they said, can anybody drive Dr. Yuan back to the city because the bus is out. Okay. So this guy, like 40 guys, you know, he said, oh, I'll do it. So we're driving back down and he starts talking to me and mentions Kunlun Shen, mm. uh, the Himalayan. I'm going, wait a minute. I Years ago, I met and he taught me and he goes, you're not supposed to learn that. That's mm. only for initiates. So we struck up a three or four year relationship. But that very last time in 88, he <laughs> calls up two days before I leave for China and he said, I need to, I need to see you. I need to bring you to see someone. So I'm going, well, I'm about to leave for China. And I had this fantasy of meeting the what the Taoist with the beard mm. in the mountain who's who appear and disappear <laughs> and, and take me away. I, I was that was where I was. It wasn't in Taiji trend or martial arts or psychology. Yes, yes, I really yes. thought that I was there's something very deep in me that I can never share with anybody. And I said, okay, I'll go. So he picks me up and he, he drives me to the city, not to the country, to a temple, into the city, into the skyscraper. It's the Ford Motor Company of Taiwan, the no. Ford Motor Company. And what are we doing at Ford Motor Company? So he takes me to the top floor and introduces me to the, the, uh, the general manager of Taiwan. <laughs> and his name is Liu Dabo. He's the eldest disciple of Liu Peijong, of, of this Kunlun branch. Liu okay. Peijong already died for several decades. This is an old man in his 80s. And he's the head of the Ford Motor Company in Taiwan. <laughs> we're yeah. standing in this plush office. He said, oh, my daughter's going to Yale and you know, all that stuff. And, and he said, what are you guys doing here? You know, Most of these practitioners of this lineage are old now. You guys mm -hmm. are in your 20s. So he goes, well, I need to say, you know, I'm, I'm part of this thing, this sect. And I want to introduce you to this Chinese American guy who had this experience with, with Kunlun. In, mm -hmm. in, in. So he goes, okay, sit down. And I started to explain to him that the method and that I had opened. And uh, then he, he walked to the closet and pulled out a book that Liu Peijong had written and on the cover was a watercolor. It was mm -hmm. like a mosaic, all these colors. He tossed it on the table. I looked at it and started crying. Oh. I said, I, 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 went, I was there. I was there. I went there. So they're like, you know, he said, well, what was that? He said, it's Ling Tai. Ling Tai is the seventh chakra in the uh, pituitary. Okay. Yeah. That I, had I had opened up to that during what yeah. Mr. Chen taught me. So they both got like silent and he goes, he go, then he went and picked up another book and said, I uh, read the Chinese said, um, there was a proverb written by the master said, uh, there are in the other world, there are seats available waiting for people to come back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm crying and mm -hmm. I don't know why, but then he goes, he goes, tomorrow is the birthday of the sword immortal. I want to invite you to this celebration because I know you're leaving the next day and I want to give you a special initiation into our sect. So this is the way I am, you know, nothing ever works perfectly for me. I was, I was, I had in mind already this white haired old man who's materialized <laughs> somewhere in China when I'm there 
And so I said, Richard, I, I'm really hesitant to do this because I take it seriously. You know, I, Guna, it means a lot to me to, I, I don't take it. I'm very serious about these initiation things. Mm -hmm. So he took me to the altar and he had me look at the three statues and said, does that look familiar? I said, no. So he turned me to the right and there was a picture of the master, Liu Pei Zhong. He says, mm -hmm. does that, do you recognize that? I said, no, no. He turned me to the left. It was a, a painting of mm -hmm. mountains and clouds and like mm -hmm. an Islamic palace gleaming from the back, probably the mm -hmm. Kunlun Shen in the other world. He goes, he says, Nikan, Nikan, look at it very closely. Do you, does, does it bring up any memories? I said, I mean, this, I'm gonna, this is where my American side's really, I was not elegant at all. I said, no, it doesn't. And then I said, I said, no, I'm really sorry, but I don't think I could do this right now. And he was so disappointed, mm. this old man. And he put his hand on my head. He said, uh, yeah. He said, it's okay. Your heart, he touched top. He said, as long as your heart is there, you'll be fine. Mm. And then he turned and walked away. Okay. And I, I felt so bad. I, I tried to go up to him and explain. He wouldn't give me the time of day after that. Yeah, yeah. And so I ended up leaving. And there, there again, another karma, you know, uh, dashed. Yeah. And uh, wouldn't it have been easy to just say yes to some of these invitations? And just <laughs> all along. But anyway, the ability, there's something, and, and I need to be honest, I know many grandmasters whose children uh, uh, are very good, mm. but, they, but they can't live completely into their parents. Yes. Because they had, you know, they came from a different culture, modern versus ancient. Mm. So I, I, I really don't know, and, and I'm really not that curious, but I, I just don't know what the descendants of the young family are getting, or whether the method, either culturally or technique wise, will open them to this quality that I believe is the most important for you to understand about young Taiji trend. Mm -hmm. So uh, sorry for being long winded, but I had to share where my perception came from. Yeah. He was, he was not ordinary Gunnar. He was yes. not an ordinary person. It yeah. wasn't just from connecting and breathing. Yes, 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 I see. No, it wasn't it, it, impossible. Yes. Impossible. Hmm. Yeah, you, you were really lucky that you met him personally, really, uh, at that time. Yeah. But with this information, can, can you feel, do you feel that maybe I could convey this to you? Yes. So I, 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 keep yeah, going. yeah, I have a very strong feeling that you are completely on the right track. I think um, that's... Definitely, um, can I say, the part which is lacking. And what, what you mentioned before, that, uh, you know, you, you practice all this stuff and so on all over the years, but some, somehow you have still the feeling something is missing. And what you explained now, um, um, before, I have the clear feeling that uh, this might be, uh, can I say, um, the part which, which can fill the gap. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a feeling. Yes, it's a, it's a quite, yes, it's a strong feeling. Yes, that's right. Any evidence yet, given the information I've just shared? Feeling versus evidence. You know, it's like evidence would be like a roadmap. Like you, you have some map. Yes. Now that, that you're on feeling, you could begin to comprehend uh, mm. a, a, an actual plan of action that you can take in your daily practice and also even help some students along with you as your, as your companions. Yes. 
that, that's the critical piece. We yes. can talk all we want about this. We need to convert it uh, in a way that that people like you who are sensitive and, mm. and interested and open can actually you have because you have to practice it. Mm. Yes. And you have to experiment. Yes. That's really a concern. Yeah. Of mind. Yeah, I, I would be very interested to, to try it out, of course, and to, to take it into the practice. Um, of course, definitely. Yes. Do you feel that with just this conversation? Yes. When you please just place yourself, just go into your practice space, your personal space. Do you feel that it might already, you, you can already do something with it? Or is there not enough information? And that, that, that what you're going to do next time you do the form is still the way you did before? Um, no, I think now the idea is already different. The idea is already different. Yes. Yeah, I yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And, and, and I just want to qualify, even though the translation for one translation for idea is E, which a term you've used quite often. Okay. Yes. Yes. This is not E. This is yeah. a bigger perspective. Yes, I see. When you just said idea, we're not talking about you using your E, uh, applying your E differently in your form. Okay. We need to create the culture. Yes. Because the E will change depending on the culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so by idea, uh, I'm interpreting that as meaning uh, you, you have a different perception of the Taiji culture. Yes. The yes. culture that Taiji is done in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yes. Any closing remarks? Um, thank you so much for this time. I appreciate uh, it. No, thank you very much for your very uh, interesting explanation. No, from our side at the moment, uh, no further questions. It's, it seems to be, it, it's very, really, very, very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Great. Great. Okay. Well, let's sign off and, uh, We'll catch you on the other side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.